Hello there, and welcome to the Space Shooter game. This is going to be the final video, and we basically already finished the entirety of the game. However, I would like to add some extra things. A few of those I am going to actually keep in the game, like sounds and particle effects. However, there are also going to be some things that are going to be a bit more advanced that I do want to cover, but that aren't really going to be useful for our game, like a camera, for example. But if you want to go further in Godot, those are really important concepts that you should know about. So let's jump right in. Here we are in Godot, and the one topic we haven't covered at all yet is audio. But if you look at the file system in the bottom, we have audio files, quite a few actually. Also we have different formats like WAV and OGG. You could also use MP3, that would work totally fine. To use them, let's start with the player, because in there, when the player is pressing space, I want to spawn a laser. And while doing that, I also want to play the laser sound. For that, we will need a new node. It is called an audio stream player. And pay close attention. We have three different kinds. We have an audio stream player, an audio stream player 2D, and an audio stream player 3D. The 3D one doesn't matter for our purposes. The difference between 2D and the plain one is that the 2D one respects the position i.e. the further away you are from the sound, the quieter it becomes, whereas the audio stream player always plays at the same volume. For our purposes, the difference here really doesn't matter. I'm going to stick with the 2D one. Let's rename it right away to laser sound. And then if you look on the right, the only really important attribute that we care about is the stream. And this one wants to have an audio file, at the moment it's empty. If you go to quick load, then you can see all of your music files for this kind of attribute. I want to go with laser. If you click on playing, you should be able to hear it. You can also adjust the volume and do other things with it, but I'm not going to worry too much about it. All we have to figure out now is how to play the sound. For that, I want to get the laser sound and then simply play it. That's all we need. If I now run the game, cool, that works just fine. With that, we can do the final exercise of this series. I want you guys to add all of the music files to the game. I think the name explains what they are going to do. So pause the video now and try to figure this one out on your own. First of all, inside of the player, we are going to need one more sound, which means I want to have another audio stream player 2D that I'm going to rename to Collision Sound, or rather to be a bit closer to the file name Damage Sound, because in there I want to have damage.ogg file, I want to go to quick load and then load damage.ogg. You could also drag the file in there, same thing. However, now we have a bit of a problem because the collision between the meteors and the player happens inside of the level. Specifically, we are looking at this line here. If that is the case, then I want to play the sound. This we can work with fairly easily. All we need is the player and then we can run a function on it. For example, play collision sound. And now this method does not exist, but we can create it. We need func and then play collision sound without any argument. And all we want to do in here is going to be the damage sound and play it. And now if you play all of that, we should be having a damage sound. And that is working. Not the most amazing sound, but it definitely works. Next up, I want to play explosion.wav. This happens when we are destroying a meteor. We want to play this one on area entered, although this isn't going to work right away. But step by step. First of all, inside of the meteor, I want to add one more audio stream player and let's call it the explosion sound. Then once again, via quick load, we want to get the explosion.wav. For that one, we have an explosion. And to play it, I want to do it before we are destroying the node and get explosion sound and play it. Now this is not going to work, but let's just confirm. And indeed, 
We get the other sounds, but we cannot hear an explosion. And the reason for that is, we are trying to play the sound, and then right after, we are destroying the node. As a consequence, the sound is also getting deleted before it has a chance to play. Now, there are a couple of ways around that. The one you should have learned from this tutorial is that you could have a signal being emitted from the meteor once the meteor gets destroyed, and then play the sound inside of the level, and that way you can keep the sound file, at least for a bit. That would be a perfectly good way of doing it, but there is another way that is a bit faster. And that is something we haven't seen yet, but the method is called await. And this one awaits a certain kind of event. And what I want to await is I want to get the tree, and then we can create a timer with a certain duration. And this one would be in seconds. So I want to wait one second and then wait for the timeout. That way, we are only destroying the node after one second. And during this time, we can play the sound. Now, this isn't going to work amazingly yet. So we get the sound, but the meteor doesn't disappear. So not amazing. Also, the duration here might be a bit long, let's say 0.5. Now, all we really have to do is hide the sprite and the collision, or disable the collision rather, and then it doesn't really matter if this meteor still exists or not. So what we can do is simply get the sprite 2D and hide it. All we have to figure out afterwards is how to disable the collision. And for that, well, we can simply create another attribute. Let's call this one, I guess we can put it below the collision, var can collide. And by default, this one should be true. After that, when the body is emitting the collision, this is the collision with the player. We only want to allow this if can collide is true. And if it is not, which we are setting down here, so can collide is false, then we are not going to get any collision. Let's try this one. And now we should be back to what we had before. And that is working pretty good. We also get the other collisions. Cool, that is working. Although I think the sound should be a bit longer, so we await for, I guess one second is fine. The duration here really doesn't matter anymore. So now I can run all of this again. And finally, we get the proper collision behavior between the meteors and the lasers. Now this is a bit of a hacky way, but it certainly works. And it's a nice trick if you have something fairly simple. Trying to delete a node while playing some kind of death sound is a really common thing you are going to do in Godot. And this way you don't have to work with signals to keep the sound after the node is gone. It can be super handy. All right, but anyway, the last two things we have are the game music and the title music. And those we can start with in the level. In there, I want to have an audio stream player, not the 2D one, although once again, for our purposes, it doesn't matter. Let's call this one the music. And for this one, once again, in the stream, I want to quick load the game music. Let's play. And that definitely works, although might be a bit loud. Uh, just play around with this and see what you like. Also, this we want to set to autoplay. With that, I can run the game and we should be having music. All right, cool, that works. Next up then, inside of the game over screen, we have to do something similar, audio stream player, and this can also be the music. For that, we are going to do the same thing, quick load and title music. Probably with a lower volume. Something like this. And this one should also autoplay. Let's try this one particular scene. And that sounds about right. And that covers basically everything, although you might have one question. And that is, what if you want to loop the audio file? So in this case, if we keep the game over screen for a while, at some point, the file is going to be over. And there's no attribute to loop it. So how can we activate that? And for that, we have to do something slightly weird. I'm not sure why that's the case. But if you look at the scene tree, besides that, we have import. And at the moment, I have the title music selected. And there, during the import, you have loop mode. 
and there we have detect from WAV. It is also disabled, forward, ping pong and backwards. In our case, we simply want to restart the music file, which is forward. Then you can customize the loop, but that's not what we need. We simply want to re-import all of that, and that's all we have to do. Now this file is going to loop. Next up, we have the game music and want to do the same thing for it. So forward for the loop mode and then re-import. And now we are good to go. The music is going to loop. Cool, and that finishes the last part of the main game. Now we have a proper functioning thing. So with that, we can talk about a couple of other things that are a bit more advanced. Although for this game, you don't really need them. First of all, I want to create a camera. And since we want to follow the player, it's going to be in there. Adding a camera in Godot is super easy. All you need is a camera 2D. And this is going to give us one part of the screen, depending on where you put it. So usually, whatever you want to follow is going to have a child as the camera, which also has to be enabled. But now, simply by adding that, we already can follow the player. Now in our case, this isn't going to do very much because we are constraining the player to this area. But if you want to have a larger game, this is what you would be using. So in my case, you could also set the zoom level, you could have an offset, stuff like that. But in my case, I want to have this disabled, so we go back to the default view. Another thing you might be interested in is a particle 2D effect. And Godot actually has two particles, CPU particles and GPU particles. You probably want to use the GPU particles because those are significantly more powerful. CPU particles are mostly there to make sure you have some kind of backend solution if you port your game to really, really weak hardware. So in our case, let's go with GPU particles. And right away, we are getting an error message that we need to have some kind of material. What that means, if you look on the right, we have a texture, we have a process material, and we have a sub-emitter. The thing we need is a process material, and there you want to have new particle process material. If you click on that, we now have a couple of particles. And if you click on the particle process material, let me drag this one out a bit, you are getting a whole bunch of stuff that you could be working with. For example, we have emission shape. At the moment, this is a point, but this probably should be a sphere that we can make a bit larger, even a bit larger. And also I want to move this one down a fair bit. At the end, this is going to be some kind of flame coming out of the player. For example, we can also set this scale and there's a scale minimum and a scale maximum. And you do want to be careful with that. We also have a color. And in my case, I want to make this thing quite a bit red. So I want to have very little of green and blue, but keep it reasonably sized. I guess something like this. I'm not gonna to be too picky with this because this is not too important. You can also set a color ramp if you click on that, radiant 1D. And now the further away we are from the origin point, the more of this color we are getting. Once again, this is a thing you want to play around with. Besides that, I also want to work on the gravity. At the moment, Godot assumes that all of this is a 2D platformer where things are falling down, which is why we have gravity 98, so things are falling down. If you set this to zero, we're not going to have any movement, and we could set this to 100 for x, then things would be moving to the right. In my case, I want to have a gravity of y with, let's say, 20. And then we have something that looks halfway all right, Although the GPU particles have to be below the player image. So I want to put all of those right at the beginning. Something like this. Now, if we're running all of this, it's not going to work perfectly well because, well, the particles live way too long and don't move fast enough. One thing you could work with there is the time should be not one second, but zero point, let's say four. And now this might help a bit. Yeah, it's a little bit better. But obviously, this is something you do want to play around with. And I think we should add the gravity, or at least the Y gravity to 50. That way you can see this a little bit better. And well, with this kind of effect, you want to experiment quite a lot. And this should probably be 100. There we go. I guess at least for our purposes, this is good enough. Now, 
there are so many options in here and also you can add a custom texture. But in my case, I'm not gonna worry too much about it because I don't wanna get into too much detail. Instead, I want to talk about a couple of notes that might be of interest to you if you want to go further. The first one is called a tile map. And this one allows you to create larger levels from a tile set. If you want to create something like a Mario style platformer, you would use a tile map to create the entirety of the level. If you want to work with light, Godot has a couple of light sources. We have a directional light, a point light, and those are the two light sources. And if you want to cast shadow, it would be a light occluder 2D. That one would basically be a collision shape for light. Basically, if you want to go further, you simply look through all of the nodes and you try to have a basic idea of what you can do. For example, you could be drawing a line or create a path and have some object follow that path. You could create a polygon, you could create a skeleton, and there are quite a few things. But anyway, all of this gets much more advanced. So I'm gonna leave it here and I hope you enjoyed this entire series. And well, I'll see you around.